Western Vanguard. It was a clear day on the island of Sodor. Gordon the big engine was busy at the head of a very full express, puffing hard. <sighs> on time, on time, that's me. Ah, oh, I'd like to see Sodor Castle beat me. He chortled as he tore through Edward Station and charged up his infamous hill with power to spare. He was making fine time and was glad when he reached the big station at the other end of the line, where the main line joined the other railway. Few minutes up. Good run, Gordon, smiled the driver. Fat controller will be pleased when he gets back. Oh yes, but where's he gone? And when does he come back anyway? Gordon asked. He's bringing back what he calls an investment. And I should be back by tonight. Be patient. Now, come on. We have a homeward train to take care of. About half an hour later, Gordon was all fired up and ready to go. He blew his whistle and started to move slowly forward. He left the platform all right, but some of his coaches were still in the station when a loud crack was heard and a rush of steam escaped from his cylinder and engulfed him. His crew stopped the train and clambered down to examine him. Oh, that's torn it, this fireman remarked glumly. Your cylinder's failed. We'll need another locomotive now. Gordon was most displeased. <sighs> this is all I need. First that rotten water test. My new boiler was supposed to make me the best, the fastest, and the strongest. Not any more, remarked the driver. And we've just got word that the fat controller was coming through, though he wasn't on our express. We had to clear section. But now we'll have to go ahead and see this. Sorry, old fella. Gordon was now deeply disappointed. To add insult to injury, two black painted mainline diesels were looking over and laughing horridly at him. Fifteen minutes later, a rather strange diesel horn honked proudly from nearby followed by the loud purring and growling of an unusual set of internal combustion engines, which silenced the two rough-looking diesels. And it was like nothing Gordon had ever seen before. The interloper came to a rest next to Gordon and paused regally. Gordon eyed him over with interest. This diesel was one of the biggest he had ever seen. His brown-orange paintwork glimmered, and his white-rimmed wheels were spotless. His body was much less square and more curved at the edges of the roof, almost like a streamlined express carriage that Gordon remembered from the LNER. Most of all the diesel locomotives had cast silver nameplates and number plates backed in red, just like a steam engine, proudly proclaiming that he was D6, and that his name was... Western Minister. His face was set into a yellow warning panel, and his eyes were narrow, filled with rough wisdom and serenity. And he had none of the snootiness that other diesels had for the Sudrian engines. Good afternoon, Sir Pacific, the diesel spoke calmly. I see you have had a spot of bother. <sighs> and I suppose you're going to tell me how you're so much Better for it, Gordon spluttered. The Western frowned, taken aback. I certainly not. It could happen to any engine, of yours or of mine. Steam engines are fine engines. I should know. I worked alongside kings, after all. He tailed off as a familiar person stepped out of his back cab in a top hat. Why, Gordon, I'd like you to meet our latest mainline engine, Western Minister, the fat controller announced as he looked at the diesel. Now, I understand you have a shorter name, much more in informal Great Western tradition. Indeed, the diesel replied. Indeed, many engines do know me as Winston. No, I must admit I'm appreciative of the new name that you so kindly granted me. Winston it is. 
Now, what happened to you, Gordon? asked the Fat Controller. His crew explained the situation quickly as the Fat Controller thought about it. We'll need to get an engineer to check the express, that's for sure. Winston cleared his throat politely. Uh, <clears throat> surely I can. I know I'm under instruction, under test as it were, but I'm also headed to your big station, after all. The Fat Controller smiled. Well, why not, Winston? That's absolutely fine. You can check the express and... If I may stand and speak, your lordship, <coughs> Winston cleared his throat gravely at an interruption. The fat controller chuckled. <laughs> no one ever calls me something that formal. Now, what's the problem? What about your fine Pacific Gordon that is here? You would certainly need an engine to carry him to your workshops. We can arrange for a work diesel to come today or early tomorrow to pick up Gordon. The express must leave, and soon, the fat controller replied. The two black diesels looked on, smirking at the turn of events. Winston growled and eyeballed them for a few seconds before returning his attention to the fat controller. Sir, I must remind you, I'm a Type 4, and most importantly, I am a Western. I could easily help both your good self and Gordon here in a single engine stroke. Take him to the workstation by all means and then move on with the express. An obvious strategic saving of time and effort, surely? Winston asked. The fat controller held the brim of his hat in bewilderment and pondered for a few seconds. You think you could haul a full express and a dead steam engine? Quite a heavy 90 tons the A3 Pacifics were. Winston growled. Mm, there's no surrender on that score, sir. I'll gladly undertake this enterprise. I mean, can you imagine him stranded here alone with those beastly diesels lurking nearby? I won't have it. Did eat him alive. The fat controller was astonished. Oh, well, very well, Winston. Prove yourself, if you must. Moments later, Winston was coupled onto Gordon's front end. The Fat Controller chose to ride in a carriage. And soon they began to move, Winston's engines picking up in a majestic roar. As they were clearing the station, however, one of the Class 47 diesels that had been watching them suddenly yelled over, Well, 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 look at that, if it ain't a tin can pulling a kettle. Well, I'll be spoked. You're as bad as they are, old timer. Outdated and obsolete, you know. If we were your fitters, we'd poison your oil and row you on the scrap line. Gordon's eyes bulged with rage. Winston, on the other hand, simply snarled and muttered, Um, excuse me, a bit my good engine. Then he cleared his throat and spoke sharply as they passed the two troublesome diesels. <coughs> Madam, if you were my fitters, I'd gladly drink that wretched oil and be rid of you. The black diesel spluttered as the cavalcade purred away under Winston's guidance. Gordon blinked with amazement, and then shock as the big western scowled and muttered, Oh, fizzy diesels, always causing trouble. Gordon was confused as they sped into the countryside. But... Aren't you a diesel? he asked. Yes and no, my dear engine, Winston started. I am a diesel, but I am more than that. I am a diesel hydraulic locomotive, the last bastion of that fine and proud tradition of engineering individualism and excellence that that great railway cathedral Swindon. And thus, I am an engine of the Western, formerly Great Western, Hierarchy, as so many of my kin and kind were. Gordon, I ticked. Another Western engine who had upstaged him. We diesel hydraulics are generally considered to be finer built, Winston continued. We have special diesel engines that transmit power through hydraulic 
mechanical transmissions that power carden shafts, which in turn power our bogies. Normal diesels are diesel electrics, by virtue that their engines power electric traction motors to move, whereas we use compressed liquid. We were rather the superior in that we had a far better power-to-weight ratio in our designs, and that we were by far the more reliable back in the old days on the western region. One of our four-wheeled bogeyed warships could almost match an eight-wheeled bogeyed class 40. Did you know that? Hefty beasts those things were. Gordon spluttered, uncertain now. I uh, haven't offended you or anything, if I, old chap? Winston asked, looking taken aback now. Gordon relaxed. Oh, no, 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 of course not. It's, it's just, we have quite a few Great Western engines on Sodor. Winston's face lit up. Ah, capital, capital. You must tell me more, my good friend. Are there any of my kind on your lovely railway? Gordon pondered for a moment. Boko and Mavis were diesels, all right, but... Well, we have Bear. He has special engines. His number was 7101 before we came here. Winston smiled gladly. Ah, fellow Western engines. Capital, capital. End of the steam engines? Gordon laughed then. <laughs> it's strange, pardon me. How you're a diesel, and yet you sound so very much like our duck. He's a paddier tank. Oh, and, uh, Sodor Castle. A castle! Most fantastic! Oh, you must allow me to meet them. I must insist. Not that you're any less a fine and magnificent engine yourself. You remind me of our kings, too, from the days of Swindon, London's Paddington Station, and Bristol Temple Meads. Winston's face lit up. Corden smiled. This engine was definitely no ordinary diesel. Well, I'll see what I can do, Winston. No doubt you'll meet Sodor Castle if you stay at our shed. Winston smiled. Hmm. Uh, it will not be the first time I've stood in solidarity with a graceful Toplink Express locomotive. His smile faded. Although, in the old days, it did not always end as well as this. But this occasion, this new commencement of duty, allows me to ponder. Is this coincidence or... or providence? Mark to himself as they powered away down the line towards home.